How long have they been dancing? Over two hours. They don't look like two of the most dangerous men in the country to me. They never do. You like Ike, I like Ike, everybody likes Ike. For president, hang out the banner and beat the drum. We'll take Ike to Washington. Now is the time for all good Americans to come to the aid of their country. If you're looking to televise the average American working life, you're documenting the wrong occupation. My brother Doug and I are private investigators. Just like our father before us, we wear hats, we wear coats, we wear pants, we look good, we look sharp, we are on the streets, we are prowling the nights, we are prowling the days. We haven't solved any cases yet, but we haven't received any cases. So. If you look at it that way, we've technically solved 100% of the cases we've received. I've been selling men's handbags on the side to make a little extra income for rent and to pay off all the handbags that I bought. They're not selling well. I told you I didn't want any of your handbags. Get out of well, here. Well, they're not for you. Scram. They're for your husband or your son. So she wouldn't be able to pull off the look anyway. Her ensemble's all wrong. Uh, working with my brother Clark is interesting. He's looser with the rules and he tends to be more interested in fashion than actual nitty-gritty work. This first case is going to be very big, very important to us. I can tell you that for certain. <sighs> Unless Clark mucks it all up. I'm a good investigator. Doug is very heavy-footed, so sneaking can be hard for him, both emotionally and physically. If I had to choose some negative thing to say about my brother Clark, I mean, I guess it would probably be his total inability to pick up on even the most obvious clues. A good, a good PI always knows where to look. And he has dandruff. A good PI never knows where to look. The clues find him. And you know what? I have shampoo for that now. It's more expensive and it burns a little. But I have it and I use it. And you know what? I'm not heavy footed. I have an ankle condition. And he hasn't had a date in two years, so. I do my, I do my job. I'm more interested in that. Go, 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 go! Get out of the way, get out of the way! Please, over here! Secret shortcut, secret shortcut! It's not a secret, everyone knows about it, it's always crowded. Oh, I'm going to the right. You're going to be wrong! Case. What an embarrassment! Oh no! Look what you did! Ah, oh, dude! I am so peeved right now. My peeve meter is a ten. <sighs> this is so embarrassing. Shh. Did you get my handbag? No, but if you would like to come down to our PI office, we'd be happy to process your case for you, right? It's just right downtown, right off Main Street, in the alley, you take a left at the, at the bank, and you go up to the top floor, that's the 13th floor, and you go down to room 1309, that's the janitor's office. You knock twice, he'll give you a key. I thought we had a case. 
Our firm is called Clark and Doug Private Investigators. Or Doug and Clark Private Investigators, depending on what day you come in. Yeah, but it's a Wednesday, so we are officially Clark and Doug Private Investigators. Hey, listen, Clark, I was hoping I could get Friday this week because... No, I'm... no, no, no. You have the big desk, and I always get Fridays. That's the agreement we have. Yeah, so someone's maybe going to come and talk to me on Friday, and I was hoping to get my name first on the door. He says this. He always says someone's coming over, and then no one ever shows up. It's really embarrassing. Someone's coming. I'm not falling for that. No, event. someone's coming right now across the street. Towards us? Right towards us! Uh, uh, okay. K-sheets go in this file. The K-sheets can go in any file, okay? We just gotta get them out of here because this place looks like a mess. Can you please dust the evidence for it? Are either of you Clark? Of Clark and Doug, private investigators? Uh, Ma'am, if you'd like to come back on a Tuesday or a Thursday, I would be happy to help you. I'm Clark. Oh, good. You're being served. If you'd come back on a Tuesday or a Thursday, my partner Doug would be happy to help you. We're being sued for damages to the building? What possible damages? Oh, well, I would assume it's the series of large holes that you drilled into the wall over there. That, madam, is the Leviathan, our patented pending phone tapping secret listening system. You're listening to the whole city's phone calls? No, just this building. <sighs> but there are a lot of juicy secrets up there. That can't be remotely legal. Okay, I have a C word I'm about to use and you're not gonna like it. Communism. As you know, the war in Korea is bringing the threat of a communist takeover directly to our doorstep. Just 5,000 miles across the ocean. As our beloved senator and future vice president, Richard M. Nixon implies, and I infer, the invasion begins with communist spies entering our country as what is commonly referred to as refugees. Now, you may be thinking, what about all the women and the children? And yes, the children are the most dangerous. All right, it's like this. So you have a bowl of candy, right? Now, if there is a communist in the candy, and then you look at the, the whole picture, now half my candy is not communist, but it just shows you how dangerous uh, candy is. Ma'am, would you eat a communist candy? What? If one tenth of one third of these candies is communist, then it... <sighs> How's it going then? Yeah, and we don't know what kind of dangerous religions they're bringing into our country either. Well, if you're talking about Korea, I think the majority of the population is actually Christian. Thank you! A religion with a notorious history of violence. Don't touch that, it's, it's fragile. This phone tapping system could very well lead to the capture of a communist spy. I used that very Russian doll to lure in possible pinkos. Do either of you guys even speak Russian or Korean? Uh, I think I'll know it when I hear it. So as you can see, we are providing a very valuable service to our country. And we can't get shut down now. Further contact can be made through Mr. Nixon's office. Listen, I'm not the bad guy here. I'm just doing my job. Someone else is evicting you. In most cases, this can be solved by paying a lump sum of money. That way, you can keep your paranoid little operation afloat. Paranoid? You know, a new couple moved into apartment 2D. Did you check their phones? Of course I did. Yeah, I wish there were more women investigators. I wish there was more women in the workforce in general. I've been doing this job long enough that I know I can do it better than most men. Maybe someday I'll get paid the same. It's 1952. How much longer is it going to take? That must be the steaks. We eat steaks for dinner seven nights a week. It's a tradition our father started back in 1925, and Clark and I do the same because it's tradition. And tradition means you never change your mind. Right? Uh, Mr. Lake's Mistake Steaks is our go-to place for steaks. Mistake Steaks are steaks that, you know, didn't pass inspection, so they can't be sold in grocery stores legally, but uh, the prices kill. And uh, so, so, do the, so do the steaks, if you don't cook them well enough. But we're careful. Hello, gentlemen, I have your steaks. Oh yeah. You know, I could bring you guys some vegetables with these steaks next time. I do deliver other groceries. Thanks, Bobby, but we like to stick to tradition around here. I mean, I got onions, I got some celery. Clark, you want a carrot? Oh, well, actually- No! 
Remember tradition. Yeah. Okay. Well, you guys are really weird, but I like you. So I'll see you next week. If you want a vegetable so bad, Clark, eat it on your own time, okay? Oh, wait, Bobby, Bobby, uh, take a flyer. Huh? Huh? I'm sure Ike and Dick can count on your vote. Well, you're not voting for Nixon? I mean, no, it's my first year voting and- What? Damn it, Bobby, it's patriotical to vote. This is the first year that the government has let us Asians not born in the US become citizens, let alone vote. What? But voting is every American's right, given to us by God, and then subsequently re-given to us by the government. Clark, fetch me my constitution. I'll get to the bottom of this. So you weren't born in the US? No, I moved to California when I was three with my parents. And then where? Portland. Oh, then where? An internment camp. Oh, for like the summer? A little bit longer than summer. Clark, can you hand me my Bible? I need to cross-reference something, please. You know, I learned how to whistle at my summer internment camp. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know, there's a lot you guys could learn if you step out of your basement every once in a while. I'm just throwing that out there. Look, all I'm saying is American democracy is often pretty selective with who it gives a voice to. Okay, well, uh, make sure to cook those steaks well. Do you think there are other issues with our democracy that we don't know about? I don't remember hearing about voting rights in any of Nixon's speeches. Well, it's our job as canvassers to find out what the American people need and then convince them that Ike and Dick can give it to them. Right. Do you think Bobby's Korean? No. He's American. I'll get it. Who's ringing your private line at this hour? I don't know. Hello? Is this a secure line? Oh. We've actually uh, messed up so many of the wires down here, I didn't even think this phone worked. Meet me at the bar upstairs. You'll know who you're looking for. Who was that? It was a uh, wrong number. Unrelated. I think I'm gonna pop outside for a quick smoke. I'll join you. Well, I only have one. We'll share. Um, I kind of feel like a cold sore flaring up. I already have a cold sore. Well, I just need a moment to myself to kind of think about. Um, so, stay in here in case the phone rings again, and uh, I'll be right back. He doesn't have a cold sore. Um, I'm looking for a man who... Are you Clark? I am. I, I called you specifically because your name was first on the sign. I have a case you might be interested in. I manage a seafood warehouse down on the pier. Something, or should I say someone, has gone missing. Given the ominous times we live in, I think it's important I find this item and bring the culprit to justice. That is, unless your skin is too pinko. <laughs> pinko? I'm not a communist. Are you a communist? I'm not a communist. Are you a communist? I'm not. Are you? Heck no, are you? Would a communist get a tattoo like this? Design it myself. All 48 stars. Never gonna change. Why don't you come down to Pier 39 tomorrow? I'll explain everything then. Wait, how did you get my number? A lady detective I know recommended you. Lady detective? Well, that was a long smoke. Well, you didn't eat your steak. I waited for you, brother. Hmm. Ah. Okay. Looks young, huh? So you're probably wondering why I was out there for so long. And it's a funny story. Uh, I was crossing the street and my shoe got stuck in a train trolley track. So I was bending over to remove it and the cigarillo fell from my ear. Liar! And you weren't out there having a smoke. You still have your smoke. It's right behind your ear. I 
can you explain? And you want to explain what you were doing out there not smoking a cigarillo? That wasn't a wrong number earlier. I knew it. I knew it. I met a man in the bar upstairs and he has a case for me. You mean a case for us? That's what I just said. You were going to keep this from me, Clark. No, no. We made a promise, Clark. I know. A promise more sacred than our pledge to help get a mill house in the White House. I know. Of getting our father's will. Don't. Stop it. Don't you turn that off. Appendix A. Article 5B, the first of my kin successfully to solve a case after my death shall be awarded sole proprietorship of Stimpleton and Sons Investigations, Inc. You know, listen, I only made that promise six years ago because you're younger and more inexperienced oh. and I, I wanted to give you a fighting chance. Oh, bull spit! You made that promise so you could bide your time, wait for an easy case, solve it, and then become the big boss. You know, when I get sole proprietorship of Doug's private investigations, you are welcome to come work for me as a file clerk or something. Doug's private investigations sound so gross and perverted. It should be Clark's private investigations. You are being very immature. You should honor the promise I made for your benefit. Sure. Yeah. You can work the case okay. as my assistant deputy. No. On Wednesdays and Fridays. No. Every day together. Fine. Fine. Promise I'll go behind your back and solve a case before you. Fine. Fine. Promise I won't sabotage you at every turn. Oh, fine. 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 I guess I'll see you tomorrow for our first official case meeting. Fine. Fine. I hope you have a good night. Oh, I will. Fine! Good night, dog. Good night, Clark. I love you. I love you too. Oh, it's so cold. Yeah, they took the case. Just like you said they would. Thank you, Arnie. I appreciate it.